Good morning and welcome to BeTheBestChiropractor.com. I'm Dr. Michelle Wendling and today we're going to talk about price versus value. Um, I'm here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. It is about gosh, 85 degrees outside, sunny and gorgeous. I wish you were all here to enjoy this beautiful weather with me. Um, and after the full day of patience today, definitely gonna get out there, enjoy it, sit on a patio somewhere and really enjoy it, or maybe go for an afternoon hike. Anyway, so today, price versus value, super important subject, no matter what kind of business that you're in. Um, and a lot of you have heard me talk in the past about, um, creating so at the analogy of two red cars sitting next to each other they're exactly the same make and model they're exactly the same everything is same interior same uh doodahs and what's it's inside the car um all of that and uh one of the cars is ten thousand dollars and one of the cars is eight thousand dollars and i know those are cheap cars sorry about that but you get the idea and so the public is kind of a funny thing because the public will say well, clearly the $10,000 car is worth more because somebody put a higher price on it. And there's gotta be a reason for the higher price, therefore it must be worth more. So there's an argument in not setting your prices too low. So make sure your prices are reasonable. All right, so let's use a different, um, let's use a different analogy so you can, get, you can get the concept of price versus value. Um, say there's a $25 item and the exact same item is $20 somewhere else. Now, most people would be like, well, I'd go get the $20 item. Well, I guess that depends because price is not just the dollar sign, right? Price is your time. Price is going to include um, how far you have to go, whether you like the store you're gonna go into and get it. So very often we will actually go for the more expensive item if we perceive the cost of getting that item as being lower. So even though the dollar sign is higher, if we don't have to stand in a long line, if we really like going to the store where it's a little more expensive, you know, there's a reason boutiques work. They're more fun, they create an experience of shopping that's more enjoyable so you can you can do that in your practice as well so once you create the value um, then the $25 item is much more interesting um, so even if the $20 item is is um, exactly the same you're still gonna go for the $25 item if it's more convenient I mean, there's a reason Walgreens, Walgreens doesn't have cheaper prices, right? We know this, convenience stores, they're not cheaper, they're actually more expensive. But because of the convenience of being able to just run in, grab the thing and run back out, their prices are higher. So just realize that the cost, the dollar sign is not all that's taken into effect with cost. So what is price versus value? What does that look like? Well, as we discussed, price is the amount of money, the time, the travel, the headache, the pain. Some people consider pain as a cost for sure. Um, and then, you know, having an experience that you like or don't like. Well, value is the perceived benefits divided by the perceived costs. So when you have a perceived benefit of something and it's higher than the perceived cost, then the value goes up. So how does this play into your practice? How does this matter? Well, a lot of people, they'll get phone calls from potential patients and the patients will say, um, you know, hey, uh, how much is your adjustments? I, I need to get my back adjusted or back cracked or whatever it is that they might say. And if your staff or yourself are giving them a number and no other information, that is only giving them one piece of information to go off of. So now they're looking at two red cars you know, perceptively that say, you know, that red car looks just like that red car because I have no additional information. But if instead, if you create value for what you do first and then the price, now the $10,000 red car actually looks way more valuable. Okay. So even the savvy shopper will say, okay, even though that that particular chiropractor is more expensive to go to, they clearly are offering more value than the guy down the street who's not. Now, you know me, I don't believe in competition. There's not enough chiropractors to go around. We need way more chiropractors because more patients are coming in over and over and over. You know, we have a waiting list to get in in our office. Most offices, a lot of offices have waiting lists to get in because they're good at this. They're good at creating value for what it is their cost is and what the perceived costs are. 
So when you give them just one piece of information, oh, the adjustment's $70. That's all the information they have to go on. So now they're comparing you and all the other practices at the $70 price point and see if that's good or not good. And that's all they can compare on. But if instead you create a value statement, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second, if you have the value mm -hmm. statement first and the cost second, then they have a ton more information to go on. And most likely you will be one of the very few offices. You're probably one of the few chiropractors in your area watching this video right now. And so because because of that, you'll probably be one of the very few offices who is effectively creating value for what you do right there in the moment, and you will have a flood of new patients and you'll have a waiting list too, if you don't already. So how do you create a value statement? What does that look like? Um, how do I get started with that? Um, so for the value statement, you want to you want to make a list of the top three things that you do well. So the top three things that sets you apart that you know that you're an absolute rock star at. So those three things. And then the top three costs that you think your patients perceive as a blockade to getting into your office. So for instance, if you perceive the blockade as maybe it'll hurt or it'll be uncomfortable or I won't enjoy it then maybe your value statement needs to have the word like gentle in it or um, soft touch or speed not force it's one of ours so those kinds of things so you want to create a value statement that will um, block anyone's objections now along those objections lines if you don't use the word pain free right um, People don't really see the word free. I mean, they see the word free when it comes to free things. Free, free this, free that. They see that, but they don't see the word free when it comes to pain. All they see is the word pain. So if you say without drugs and surgery, what they see is drugs and surgery, right? So please don't discuss things as, um, as a negative, you know, or without or any of those things. Instead, say the positive side of those things. So instead of saying pain free, um, say feels good right? Good feeling. You can look up pain, look up all of the opposites of pain, and there's a myriad of words for that. So you can add any of those words, but don't use pain-free in your value statement. Um, you want to use words like long-lasting, right? One of their costs might be, um, you know, gosh, it's going to be temporary fix, and you're going to use the words long-lasting to be anti-cost. So look at the top three things that you do incredibly well, and then the top three things that you think your patients consider a cost. If you're not sure what these are, ask your staff. They're answering the phone. They're getting the objections. They know what those are. So get those together, look at all of those words, and then come up with two or three sentences, not very long, for your value statement. Now, what do I do with a value statement, you say? Well, the value statement is what your office staff says when someone calls and says, Hey, do people still do this? I don't even know. This is like a big phone. I don't even, I don't think that's a thing. I think they'd do this. Hey, anyway, so when they say, hey, how much is your cost? You know, how much is it for an adjustment? My knee's tweaked. I need to get my knee fixed. Your office staff can say, well, value statement, blah, 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 blah. And it's just $70. And the patient will go, great, sign me up. How soon can I get in? If you don't do that, patient's going to be like, hmm, hmm, $70. Okay, well, the guy down the street, 65. So hmm, I can't, I don't have any other information to go off of. So I guess I'll just go off the 65. So don't lower your prices. Don't devalue your service. Really, really important to get paid what you're worth. Really, really important to create value for what you're charging. So also, if it's harder to get into your office, that's a cost as well. So make sure you're, again, you're creating more value. The harder it is to get in your practice, like our practice, again, it's, it's quite a wait to get into our office. And so we have to create a lot more value for those people to want to wait to get on our schedule. So get good at that. Um, it, once you come up with a value statement, I would love it if you'd post it in the comments so I can read it. That would be awesome and everyone can see it. If you wanna know what my value statement is and what our value statement is in our office, Go ahead and make a comment as well and request that and I will be happy to send that to you as a private message. Um, and if you have other questions or other things you'd like us to talk about, um, just let us know. Here we are at bethebestchiropractor.com and uh, you can get all the information that you need about whatever practice things you need. Just go to the website. There's a lot, a lot of free videos on there so you're going to love it. Um, so take a look. Um, and, you know, make sure you're creating the value for every single thing that you do. Um, 
Oh, and a side note, make sure you're creating value for all your different services, not just the chiropractic adjustment. Um, Cause again, you don't just wanna be providing services that um, without charging for them and without, without creating value for them. So make sure you're doing both. And if you want more information on that, we are gonna talk about that next week, how to create value for every single service that you offer and how to present that value in such a way that people get the value behind what it is that you do every day. So continue to be the best chiropractor for your patients, for your practice, and for yourself. Thanks for watching, have an amazing weekend and enjoy the weather wherever the world may lead you. Thank you.